Just like Tom Cruise entered the danger zone. We're gonna enter the mining zone. This is a Bitcoin miner behind me. That's the miner you hear, it's loud. It's not like deafening loud, but it's also not the kind of thing you want to sleep with <laughs> next to, okay? Several months ago, this exact mining rig would have ran you about 10 grand. It's one third of that cost now. So I'm intrigued. I'm like, hmm, maybe it's time to expand the Bitcoin mining operation, which is exactly what I'm doing. But Bitcoin is more difficult to mine than ever before. Yet Bitcoin mining still produces over $20 million per day. Today, we're gonna break down the Bitmain Antminer S19. I've been running that exact model for a couple weeks here. And we're just gonna have that classic question of, is it worth it? And is this the miner worth buying in particular? My name is Vosker on the Voscoin YouTube channel. Let's dig into it. Bitcoin mining is not for everyone, but in my opinion, it should be. Yes, I'm biased. I love crypto, I love Bitcoin, I love mining. I mean, look at the freaking background. I even mine Bitcoin in, in 8-bit pixel art, you know? And so, obviously, I'm not here to influence you. I hate like this era of like influencers and stuff like that. I'm bringing you a review on the Bitmain Antminer S19. I'm gonna share some of my experiences and opinions along the way. And to illustrate how serious I am about all of this, I am burning up some serious cash building out a bigger Bitcoin mining farm than I've ever had before. And if you get into Bitcoin mining, that means I'm gonna be mining less Bitcoin because that means more people are trying to eat the same pie. So with all that said, let's talk about exactly that. Bitcoin mining difficulty just went up 13.55%. That's a lot. That means that the Bitcoin mining difficulty has hit an all time high. It is more difficult than it has ever been to mine a Bitcoin. Yet Bitcoin's price is not at an all time high. It's actually significantly down from that. Uh, in particular, it is down 73%, but it don't matter. We keep the party rolling. So let's jump into it. 192234 is going to take me to my ant miner. This is on my local network. When you get the mining rig, take it out of the box, you plug in power. It's two power connections on the power supply, which is attached, it's the box on the side of it, pretty much. And you, if you're using a PDU, you'd have C13, C14 cables. Also, this power supply is only rated for 220 volt plus, which is basically 240 volt on single phase. You normally run like 208 on three phase. If you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Carlos, <laughs> relax, my dude. We have an electricity guide on this as well as a setup guide on how to set up an ASIC miner, which is what this miner is. It's an application specific integrated circuit miner. It's a purpose built custom computer literally just for mining Bitcoin or even more specifically the SHA-256 mining algorithm, which is most notably Bitcoin. I take that IP address, I log into my router, I use an IP scanner and I get that information. Password, username, same word, root. Root, root, kind of like my boy, Groot. I am Groot. Now I'm in. We see the performance, average total hash rate. It's about 1,000 giga hash a second faster than it's rated. It's a 95 terahash a second model. 95 terahash is the same as 95,000 giga hash. Those are just, you know, metrics. Those are numbers that evaluate your mining power. This only translates to that specific mining algorithm, right? You, this doesn't mean you can bring that much mining power to a different cryptocurrency that has a different mining algorithm. You're probably like me and wondering, Bitmain, dudes, come on. Where's the freaking dark theme? Uh, unbelievable. But after you stop thinking that, you look at the performance, right? Pool rejection rate low, love that. You see my information input here for the mining pools, great. We look at the hash boards, right? 76 chips on three different hash boards. These are these boards, they slide inside the miner and that's why you have four fans on each side and they push air through it, keeping it cool. This is an air cooled miner. We look at the performance, it's everything you want. Chip state normal, even has a breakdown, which this is pretty cool. It has a breakdown 
of the actual chips. This is a great development for miners that will help with just longevity of any sort of repairs and maintenance. When you want to set your mining pool, you click on settings, you input the pool information, your username, dot worker name, passwords, they're optional these days. Modes, we got normal and sleep, fan speed, you pretty much just leave this stuff alone and let the miner do its thing. I'm using Via BTC. I've had good results on that mining pool. I'm dropping a link down below that you can support the channel if you make an account and mine over there. They're not a sponsor or anything, just sharing some results. I'm going to get a lot more Bitcoin miners online soon, and I'm going to do a bunch of real-time mining pool profitability comparisons. But for now, I run unlimited data, and this one's working for me, and it's profitable right now, which is all you can ask for. Very good information and data you get out of this pool as well. The cool thing about signing up with Via BTC see with our link though is you get 50% off your mining pool fees which will translate to higher mining profitability for you it tracks your total earnings which is fun and then it also tells you your account balance which you can set to auto withdrawals or you can do manual withdrawals whenever you want pretty flexible in that regard you can see my hash rate in a one hour breakdown and pretty stable pretty consistent it's what we want 10 minute average to be honest doesn't really matter one day average is what you care about it's right on the money for what this miner is supposed to do so even though in the dashboard of this amp miner s19 again specifically the 95 tera hash a second version because there's many 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 versions and they're all relatively similar in performance and reliability in my testing at least but you're really looking just for the one that is the best value right how much does it cost if this one's like five hundred dollars cheaper and you just lose a couple tear hash second it's probably going to be the better investment from a mining point of view but as always it's not financial advice thanks a lot my clo tails our chief legal officer and the cutest pup in the game how can you be mad at this doug she is so cute we call her doug because she digs she's a mining dog just kidding i'm losing my mind these days so looking at the hash rate chart, this is daily hash rate chart on uh, the miner. So daily hash rate here reported as 96, 95, 90, almost 97, 95 and a half, a little bit under 95, 95 and a half. So pretty good performance here. Remember, whatever the pool says you're doing is what you're going to be paid off of. It doesn't matter what the miner says. It could say anything, but the mining pool validates what you're doing and pays you accordingly. So we can look down at my hash rate per day and we can see just how much I'm earning. You will notice that I've had this miner for a couple weeks now. This is really a two week review of this specific Bitmain Ant Miner. So we look at this device and you see pretty good mining profitability and then it has a stark drop off on these two dates. Well, let's run the numbers at current Bitcoin price. It's funny how quick things move in crypto. So, so when I loaded this like an hour or so ago, Bitcoin was at 18,400. And now with a quick refresh, it's 18,954. So at that number, I made $6.82. At the new Bitcoin price, just barely breaching $7. So I was earning $7 per day with this mining rig. We hit a quick refresh over here and we look at the mining profitability. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't even know what to do with all that money. Uh, we input the number post difficulty adjustment, which I'll explain a bit more about that and some of the other future difficulties with Bitcoin mining. I'm down almost 80 cents per day. That's a crazy, crazy decrease in mining profitability. I plugged a computer into the wall and I'm earning over $6 a day in this crazy magic digital internet money thing this borderless peer-to-peer -peer cash digital gold currency it's pretty freaking cool i would like to say thanks to coin mining central for helping us source our miners dealing with bitmain you have to kyc you pay imports tariff duties things like that and depending where you are with coin mining central you may not have that issue which can add 30 percent to your bill so like this mo this model right here shipping from within the united states that means I get it quickly, no customs, no tariffs. And it's not even like you're breaking the rules, breaking the laws, whatever, no, no, no. This is just a domestic order, all there is to it. So this is the exact model I have here. It's about $3,200. And again, when it comes to looking at different models and you know which one's worth it and things like that, right? You just kind of run the numbers. For example, I was digging around their inventory. This one's USA in stock. This one, they don't have any stock right now of this model in the United States. 
So this miner is about $100 more, but it hashes at five terahash a second faster, and it's in the USA. Basically, it's a no-brainer if I'm looking to buy about this exact model right now. I'm going for this one over the uh, the 95 terahash a second version. But again, they ship throughout the world. Run the numbers, look at your local imports and tariffs, and just figure out what's best for you. Contact them if you have questions. I mean, they're a minor reseller. They're here to offer some support and just uh, clarification in that regard. The difference between these though, when you do get some more hash, doesn't come free. This uh, 95 terahash second model consumes 3,100 watts. And this uh, 100 terahash second model consumes 3,245 watts. So we look at the profitability. This is where, you know, it, it hurts. At 10 cents per kilowatt hour, these miners are basically treading water or losing a little bit of money per day. For example, this S19 is, uh, this power input, at least for the model I have, is wrong. It's supposed to consume 3,100 watts. And that 100 terahash second version we looked at consumes a little bit more wattage than this. Uh, at the end of the day, at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, these miners are actually losing about $1 per day. The newer generation of the S19 XP would be still making about $3 a day at a 10 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate. You got to run your electric numbers because again, mining Bitcoin is more difficult than it's ever been, which means that it's harder to turn a profit. If you've got 5 cents per kilowatt hour electricity rates, you're still raking in the cash. You're raking in the BTC with this stuff. But Bitcoin mining is continuing, unfortunately, to move further and further away from being a residential dream, right? There are mining altcoins like Cadena, right? Among several others that with the right mining rig can be very profitable because they're efficient. There's less difficulty and things like that. But you also have more uncertainty. Right, the gold shell and Ivy Link miners were cash cows mining KDA, but then Bitmain came out with the ant miner KA3 and it blew those other miners out of the water because their new Cadena miner is so efficient. And things like that happen with these like younger cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin's been mined for a decade, that's crazy, and that's how long all these companies have had to research, to develop, to push the envelope. These are very advanced mining rigs. Bitcoin produces about $20 million a day in Bitcoin. And we're still something like 500 or so days away, 460 maybe, from the next Bitcoin halving, which will cut the amount of Bitcoin mine per day in half, which if nothing changes means we'll all make half as much money, which will be a really trying time for many Bitcoin mining operations. Crypto was crazy in 2021. It led to a lot of people, companies, money flowing into crypto, flowing into the Bitcoin mining space. A lot of those are going underwater right now. They're drowning. They're dying. That will pro provide a lot of just reprieve for Bitcoin miners that can stay the course. How do you make it as a small scale miner in this environment? My end game, solar power. It's a long game. It's an expensive investment. But I want to go piece by piece, build it out, and have a fully solar-powered mining farm. Pay off the panels, pay off the mining rigs. I got true money printers. And it's not going to be easy. And it is still risky. But I'm here to party. <laughs> so uh, for me personally, right, you know, this actual specific model in particular, it's been great. It's been fine. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Love that. Uh, an alternative... Uh, that can help is looking at immersion cooling, liquid cooling, expensive upfront cost, but you can get your efficiency up, which is very important when you have a high electric rate. At the end of the day, if your electricity rate is too high, it just doesn't make sense. It costs cents or even dollars. See what I did there? So, hey, as always up to you. You do whatever you wanna do. If you're a small scale miner, Bitcoin mining, again, is unfortunately becoming harder and harder to do. But if you want to jump into this, this is a great opportunity. Miners are cheaper than they've been in recent history. I will say that there is nothing more satisfying being a full-blown freaking crypto nerd than mining some Bitcoin. Mining like the OG Mr. Orange Coin, but 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 Bitcoin himself. So maybe even just getting one miner, there's silent enclosures and things like that that can make it a lot more palatable. Redirect that heat into your house when it's cold, bam. 
now you're kind of repurposing it. Now it's just a space heater that earns you money, right? You were gonna burn up that electricity anyway. And then when it's hot outside, direct that heat outside. Just have a little lever that turns that heat whatever way you want it to go. A little bit of a production, but uh, that's one of my upcoming projects for the new house, which I'm pretty excited for. It'll be uh, a fun one. That's all I've got today. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, do your own research, and I'll see you on the next video.